great. If you are joining in, we're going to give it just a minute or two for people to kind of file in, uh, get their bearings on this Friday morning, and then we'll get started in uh, a minute or two. I'm going to play around. Has anyone played around with the audience tools, the Q&A? We have been using the Q&A. Um, I, I would say the one thing we have not used is polls yet, so I'm interested to use that in the future. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I see up here. Fun stuff. Oh, wait, eight, eight people on there. Nice. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Having fun with a control panel. All right, I guess we can use a... Uh, Trying to figure out how to get the uh, question. I can't change the question, but hey, if you're on listening, um, we were, uh, Kayla and I were just talking about how our morning routines have changed. Uh, anybody want to share while we're, we're hanging out here, uh, fun things uh, or different, what's different about your morning, uh, the morning routine that you, you're keeping? Morning, Reginald. Greetings from Smyrna. So, all right, Reginald, since you uh, poked your head up, uh, what is, uh, what is, how has your morning routine changed uh, since uh, we've been in this uh, lockdown, lockdown mode? Has it changed? And if it has, what's the biggest difference? We'll play along this morning. And actually, Reginald, I can allow you to. to oh, speak. mornings are harder. Working so late. Kids are, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, uh, Kayla, you got the call in. You can do the, the call in for people to talk to. Nice. Who else is out there? We've got, um, we've got a good show so far. I mean, good showing. Anybody, uh, has anyone, uh, <laughs> it was interesting, the, uh, I was also sharing with Kayla that the uh, evening rituals around my, my place has changed because there's a lot more people that are outside taking evening walks. Uh, how many people are doing, oh, hey, I'm here. I'm here, curious, uh, how has your morning changed? What more, uh, what is, what is, has your morning routine changed at all? Is it the same? Is it tough? Yeah. What was the biggest difference for you? I like, uh, oh, oh yeah. That's nice. It, it's interesting, guys. Uh, the, 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 there was a survey out of the UK that came out this week, and um, only 9% of the respondents um, actually want to go back to their life before pan the pandemic broke out, like the lifestyle. And it's a little bit of what you're saying here in terms of you know, being able to you have time to, uh, to go for a walk every morning. People are finding a more a richer, more kind of a more richer experience, life experience. Um, be, you know, because now that we've gotten into the kind of hunk, past the hunker down and uh, now getting to our new routines, people are finding that um, they're spending more time preparing food, uh, sharing meals with the people that they can share meals with. Uh, they're feeling cl more closely connected to their community. Uh, and, um, and they're also ex in experiencing these new routines where we aren't throwing so much time away at traffic. Hey, Jeff, good to see you. Uh, you go outside, you like to go outside with the kids in the morning, get some exercise, yeah, before you start work and they start school. Isn't that nice? You're able to, you're able to um, uh, do, you actually live a life uh, before you go to work. This is crazy. Like, we're able to balance that. Kayla, should we get rolling? Should we get rolling with the actual, what we're talking about? Thanks to everyone for here and Jeff and, and, uh, and Reginald for sharing that. That's good stuff. Yeah. We'll, we, uh, we'll, we'll be, anytime you want to throw something in the chat, I've got the chat up and, and I'm watching it, so. Uh, feel free to raise your hand as well. I think there's that tool where you can get that going on. And then uh, if you if you want to talk, uh, just let Kayla know, and uh, she has the ability to do that. So Kayla, you want to kick us off? Yeah. So like um, Scott said, if you have uh, questions and we want to speak openly, just feel free to raise your hand, and I can unmute you. Um, there's a the chat functionality which you guys have been using, and there's a Q and A. So if you have any specific questions for Scott. Uh, please feel free to post those there. Uh, if for some reason you have to hop off early or you want to reference this again, we will be getting in touch um, following this on how you can download and watch uh, the recording. Um, so Scott, I'll go ahead and let you kick us off. So this is part two um, of a, a two-part series. So 
you kind of talked last time about uh, growing your roots. Um, and then today we're going to get into a newer topic. So Scott, I'll let you take it from here. Awesome, Kayla. Thank you. Yeah. So if you wanted to kind of see the context uh, and the meat of what I talked about last time I was on uh, the, the workshop series, uh, you can go to causeshift.com slash blog. It's cause as in cause trouble, shift as in shift gears dot com slash blog. And there's a post called feeding your roots today. And it's really uh, tips to help you as a leader uh, uh, invest on what you need to get yourself on solid ground because we've gotten through so much change. Um, and but also what you can do to help your team members too. So, um, so a quick introduction to who I am. Uh, so Scott Henderson, aka Scotty Hendo on the social webs. Uh, if you want to find me there, I'm on Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook and all that. Um, but I, uh, I have a background. Uh, it's hard to uh, describe. The arc I've, I've lived is really about putting teams of people together and uh, helping galvanize communities behind a vision and then uh, achieving that vision. So I've done that through major gift fundraising, capital campaign fundraising for uh, universities and nonprofits. Um, I've been involved with digital media agencies and doing digital strategies for large companies, small companies, nonprofits, um, uh, and then uh, got into cause marketing, doing cause marketing. And through cause marketing, I came across the cause of entrepreneurship. Having created my own companies before, I realized it was in the um, fallout of 2008, 2009, there was an initiative called Startup America Partnership that was a private sector initiative. I was on the launch team to help kind of set the, the bar higher in different communities across the country around entrepreneurship. And through that, got me involved. I was living at the time in Boston, in the Boston, Cambridge area. I got involved with the, the entrepreneurship scene there. Moved back to Atlanta. I've been in Atlanta three times in my life. And I uh, got to be part of the Atlanta tech uh, startup scene. Uh, created something called Hypopotamus, which exists today. It's the kind of the digital publication of record for anyone in the Southeast in the technology entrepreneurship field. Uh, and they got very involved around universities and these mixed use multi-tenant uh, developments uh, that are being touted as innovation districts um, and research parks uh, and got involved uh, in that way uh, from, from a, spent, a sense of um, uh, uh, focusing on media, uh, focusing on events, and focusing on uh, physical spaces for people to come in. So for those of you in the built tech world, uh, that's kind of the, the aspect of uh, how I see things is how do you bring these physical uh, developments alive with the human beings that are there. So um, what I've done most recently, last year I served as the Chief Entrepreneurial Officer at Purdue University uh, up in um, central Indiana. And uh, as of January, I, I went back into the world of uh, entrepreneurship and uh, uh, got into, I got officially certified. I've been uh, utilizing the Gallup organization's um, insights around talents and strengths around helping people in, uh, understand who they are and what they can bring to the table every day, but also um, how you use that in a team environment. One of the things that um, uh, I did, uh, oh, you're welcome, Mahir. You, you familiar with uh, a hypopotamus? Yeah, yeah, it's, I, I was, I, was uh, I don't wanna get off track, but uh, I was there, launched it as a digital record, but I have to give props to Kevin and Heath and, uh, and Ashish who funded all that stuff, so good stuff there. Um, so anyway, getting back to the strengths, um, this is really germane to what we're talking about. I wanted to kind of under, you know, give you the context of what this is because, you know, we as individuals, as in human beings, uh, we get into our routines, our thoughts, patterns, uh, you know, these recurring cycles of thoughts, behaviors, and emotions that we have. And about age 14, 15, we get hardwired in our minds on how we see the world. Um, and then uh, really it's about just understanding yourself and what you bring to the table, what makes you stand out. Uh, and I, I used Gallup organizations, Clifton Strengths for about 20 years of my life, building teams out. And last year, about, actually about five years ago, Gallup organization came out with a new tool called Builder Profile 10, uh, which is very much focused on um, how you build successful companies. They ask themselves, well, can we, can we find the recurring talents that were there? Um, could we find the recurring patterns of thoughts and emotions that drove highly successful companies? So they spent five years researching it and then they unveiled it five years and it's been out there. So I brought it to Purdue University last year uh, and we trained about 24 people up on the Builder Profile 10 uh, assessment and really took the lens of, okay, what kind of talents do we need to account for on these teams? Because if you're building uh, startups out of a university environment, especially in a small town in central Indiana, you don't have the deep bench of people that we had at Tech Square. Um, yeah, Sunit, yes, it's, uh, 
it's been it's been a while, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll come back to Tech Square soon. You'll see me. I'm uh, responding to the chat thread, thread. So if you ever watch Twitch, this is what it's like. It's me talking and then going down to the chat thread. Um, but anyway, the uh, the whole thing around uh, team formation was if you only have so many uh, uh, pitches coming at you uh, at, at using a baseball metaphor, you got to make sure that you're you're choosing the right ones to swing at, and then when you do, you have the right team behind you. And so um, I did a deep dive and I've gone through the whole certification process around Gallup, uh, having used it for 20 years. Um, I got the, the chance to, to train up in January uh, with uh, a bunch of people, as well as uh, took a road trip uh, to Oklahoma City to meet with some uh, a firm that's been using the BP10 on helping create startups uh, for a couple of years now. Um, and so and this year launched this practice around it. And so I wanted to share with you the the, the, the gist of what we, how we could use this in today's world, because I think uh, everyone who saw the numbers yesterday, uh, we're up to 20, I mean, we had another 4.4 million unemployed people. Um, we are at, uh, in some states, 24% unemployment. So there's a lot of people who uh, don't have work anymore. And there's, you know, I think we're seeing this, month, this week and next week, uh, probably I see a lot more of these uh, numbers around layoffs. So there's everyone who's in owns a company right now, large, small, uh, fat and happy, or thin, thin and weak, is always is asking the question, "How am I going to get through this?" Right. So if that's you know kind of part of why you're joining is like, so how how can I, what do I need to know to get through this? What I wanted to offer up is is, is a lens. This is kind of you can use it if you want to. You don't have, you don't have to believe it, but it's based on empirical research and science of how you can create the right team to make sure that your core team uh, that's gonna carry you through this is gonna get through this with the right sets of talents that are you can account for. There's, we're talking about three roles and we're gonna talk about 10 types of talents. Um, but as you can see on the screen right now, um, right now that's the hierarchy of, uh, of needs that Maslow, Abraham Maslow has uh, shared with us. And I, I think for the last five, six weeks, most of us have been living in the, in the red, right? Uh, red and orange, and that's different. That's different than most people have ever been in. Uh, who those of us have lived in the United States all of our lives, and that not had to worry about um, are we going to die uh, of some sort of virus or disease, or you know we're wired this way uh, to uh, to to have those threats and anxieties, but we're not wired this way to be always on like that, right? So it's been taxing to us. I think all of us have probably kind of felt that. Uh, um, fog. I know I certainly have. Um, I think uh, we all have uh, have been dealing with this the large amount of energy that we have expended on on survival is is just exhausting. And then throw in the mix, uh, Jeff. You mentioned kids. Uh, you know, if you have kids at home and you're working from home, you know, gosh, God love you. I mean, that's that's a lot to balance, right? So this uh, this this pyramid, this uh, hierarchy of needs. Uh, it, it's, it'd be nice to be up in the blues, but the reality is we, uh, if, if you look at the Feed Your Roots uh, post at, at the, um, on my blog, you'll see that it's about acknowledging the difficulty that we have ahead of us. This is a challenge that we're going to have, right? Uh, and so why, uh, why not also then remember the second half of that, which is have, hold the hope that you'll get through this. So if we know that it's a, high, it's, it's a great challenge and we know that we need to hold hope, What's 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 the what's the action path for us? So, you know, the, the idea here is um, we need we need to make sure that we, on the boat that you have, the, the ship that you have, you have the right crew, right? And if you have the right crew to get through this, um, you'll survive. Uh, and but then the question is, who's the right crew? So, talking about Gallup, um, I'm gonna get into a couple things here. So, um, let me get back over here. Sorry about that. Can't see. Does everyone see? Kayla, can everyone see the, the, the slide that's up there that says you and your better self? We cannot. Okay. All right. And I'm going to get out of this mode. And, uh, oh. Pardon me, everyone. Let me get back over here. All right. All right, now you can see it. So if you didn't see the pyramids and the boats, here's the pyramids. So we, we've been living in, in the base of the pyramid, um, and now it's a matter of who do we have in the boat. So using some of the slides from a workshop I usually give, so I'm just gonna go into some of the essence of it, not necessarily go through all of it. Um, 
But you got to look at, um, you know, if you look at um, starting a business, building a business, keeping a business going, um, the, the whole idea around uh, having a successful company is, is understanding who's, who, who are the people inside of that who are making the decisions on a daily basis. And if you understand um, that there, is, there are certain talents and certain strengths that actually help a company um, differentiate themselves and, and outperform the rest of the market, I think we can also say that they're going to also have a higher chance of survival in this. So, you know, but why, why would you care about talents? Why would you care about strengths? Um, it's first off, it's, it's for you as a leader, it's understanding who you are better. You know, you, you bring something to the table every day that's different than anyone else in the world, right? You, you have specific talent sets. Uh, and if you develop those talents and the strengths, uh, you can actually, you know, utilize them uh, in a very self-aware, mindful way to help, manage your team and bring the best out of them as well as bring out the best of you. And if you study psychology um, and positive psychology specifically, positive psychology is a field of when do things go right, right? When do things go right? Uh, and when are you at your best and when are you successful? As opposed to, you know, historically, when you think of psychiatry and psychology and, and counseling, you're thinking of what's broken. This is looking at what works, you know, how do you get to that next level? And by focusing on what makes you stand out and what are your unique talents, you're actually going to find yourself in, in a better state of mind. Um, and, and, and really, I want to clarify before a couple of things is, you know, what this is, what this is about today. It, it's, we're not going to talk about you know, uh, what you're not, right? You know, it's, I, don't, I don't know what, what you're not, but I can tell you what you are uh, when you look at your talents and your strengths. And so what's, what's interesting here is if you take a focus on um, you know, building your company around a strengths approach of seeing what makes you stand out, what makes, what are those recurring thoughts, behaviors, and actions that you have as well as your team members and what roles they play within that, uh, that, that this framework I'm going to share with you, you're going to find uh, your company's four times more likely to create jobs, four times more likely to exceed your profit goals, three times more likely to build um, a large business and grow it significantly, and five, more, five times more likely to exceed your sales goals. And these are, these are all numbers uh, from Gallup organization who works with a wide variety of companies around the world that tracks that. They are an amazing um, uh, data analysis. And a couple, um, a couple things for you in terms of the uh, definitions. I think nomenclature ma means a lot here. Um, when people say, well, uh, what, and you ask the talent, uh, question, like, what's your talents? A lot of people start talking about their knowledge base. They'll, they'll talk about skills that they have. And, and knowledge and skills are important uh, but they're different, right? Knowledge is something that you can learn, either formally or informally, and skills are things you can pick up. So over your lifetime, you, can, you gain experiences that teach you knowledge and teach you skills. And that's the thing is you can, anyone can pick those up. What's different here is the talents that you have are the ones that you, you because of social uh, uh, um, uh, environment, because of uh, genetics, these are the thought patterns uh, that are, are naturally occurring in you in terms of thoughts, behaviors, and feelings that you have. Um, and that they can't be taught. They can't be learned because they're ingrained in who you are. Um, and so, you know, you think about what is it when you try to figure out what is, what is talent? Um, it's, it's about potential, right? It's about, it's about getting the most out of yourself and getting the most out of people. So if you know that people are coming on, uh, to work on, on a daily basis with naturally recurring patterns, it probably would make sense for you as a leader to understand what those natural recurring thoughts, behaviors, and, and emotions are so that you can put them in the right position to use those on a daily basis. Um, and if you look at it uh, like from a perspective of um, uh, how this all works, it, it's, it's a matter of um, understanding a talent is raw, right? Talent is raw. And it's, it's the, the way you are, right? It's the way you are. And the difference between a talent and a strength is that a strength is you focused on these talents and you've been able to create um, near perfect performance, right? You're, you're constantly focusing on using that talent and employing it to achieve something, right? So the difference between a talent and strength is one's raw, one's refined. The other is um, you know, that you've, um, um, uh, it, it's a way of being, you just do are versus a way of doing. So strength is applying your talents to specific performance outcomes. So you can do this as an individual, you can do this as a team. So uh, I think the other thing here is weaknesses. People say, well, if I know my strengths and my talents, then obviously my, my weaknesses are out there. Well, 
Interestingly enough, way that I, uh, the Gallup and, and then I, that I work with in terms of the definition around a weakness is, is not the opposite of strengths. Weakness is anything that keeps you from achieving your goals, achieving your outcomes, right? So if a talent is raw and you develop that, that talent into a strength, if you're not mindful of your strengths and your talents and you dial something up when it should be dialed back down, then you can actually create, you can, uh, strength can be a weakness at the same time, right? So if I am, if I am uh, very um, deliberative, is a, is a, is a word, uh, very deliberate, uh, or I'm very focused on, let's say, let's focus on relationships. If I'm very focused on relationships. Um, th th this, uh, this is a talent of mine that I can develop into strength and that I can actually use in terms of a sense of building a business. I'm thinking about my Rolodex. I'm thinking about who, who should I be reaching out to. But if I'm constantly thinking about my, my, my relationships or I put a relationship over a business outcome, that's, a, that's an example of it becoming a weakness, right? So it's, again, talent is raw. You develop into something that's uh, refined and you're using it effectively at near perfect performance as a strength. And a weakness is anything that blocks you from achieving your goal. All right, so why, why should you care as an individual? Uh, and, and I think we've been talking at the front end of this of like how our life has changed. People who focus on what they're good at, what they are naturally strong at, where their naturally recurring patterns are, as an individual, you're going to find yourself, and this is important when you think about this physiological taxing that we've had on our bodies. Um, if you constantly are only thinking about what's wrong, um, it's going to take away energy. Now, when you focus on what is right about you and how you're using those on a daily basis and you're refining them, you as an individual are going to be more likely to have a, a, a you know, report that you have an excellent quality of life. You're going to be more engaged in your work. You're going to have, you're going to see the world in more positive interactions. Uh, you're going to treat your customers better. You're going to look forward to going to work. You're going to achieve more on a daily basis. And you're just going to have more innovative, creative breakthrough moments. And that can be true for you as well as your team. So if you think about this, we're going through a hell of a storm right now, right? This is no one knows. It's going to be fits and starts for the next 18, 24 months of our lives until we figure out what's going on. Um, so it's a matter of understanding uh, if you're spending time um, on uh, uh, who you are and what makes you stand out uh, and that your team is, that's actually going to feed, feed you uh, on, on, on that the base level to sustain you, to help you make sure that you're making better decisions. Kayla, can you... Um, uh, Help me out here. I, I, can you? There's a Q&A. There's a question in the Q&A, but I'm because of uh, my share screen, I'm not able um, to see it. So Mahir says, will we have access to the presentation later? Uh, that's a really great question. Um, I'm going to put together a um, synopsis of the key points in the presentation, and then uh, also uh, we'll have a video in about a week or two. Uh, and so. Uh, some of these slides are all you see bottom right and bottom left copyright Gallup organization. Um, so I'll share a distillation of it all, um, but definitely take notes as you can. I can't share all of the slides at this point because of their copyright restrictions, but I'll give you the give you the gist of what these are. Okay. Thanks to me here. All right. So if we if we're in this mindset of um, all right, do I have the right people on in my in my boat that we're gonna get through the storm. And we know that the storm is gonna be knocking us around and we need to make sure we have people have resiliency and we make sure that people are, are you know, making better decisions. Um, taking this strengths-based approach to asking yourself, do I have the right core team is important, right? It's also, you know, as we get through the storm, a great way to live a more fulfilled life. So um, let's see here. You might hear as we get into the, the, the science of the Builder Profile 10 um, and the specifics, you know, the difference between innovator and builder, right? So um, in, in terms of our definition, an innovator is anyone who's coming up with, um, uh, that has that passion for uh, improving something, uh, for, uh, you know, solving problems, creating something. Um, and the difference between an innovator and a builder is builders are actually taking those ideas and putting them into action. You know, building out a business around that that sells things. So innovators come up with the ideas, and then the builders are the ones that actually build a business around it and take it into the world. So think of it a thinker and a doer. And you can be both. You don't, it's not like you only can be an innovator and only be a builder, but there is a, a specific difference. I mentioned um, Purdue University. Uh, there's a lot of great scientists at the universities that come up with their innovators, uh, but they are not the doers. They're not the builders. And a lot of what the structure that we were doing 
um, with building out the, 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 the thought process of how do you form a team where the innovator doesn't feel that they have to be the builder. So with that in mind, um, you know, an activity like another definition is building in the Gallup world. Building is anyone who can create customer energy where none existed. So they originally rolled this out as entrepreneurial profile 10, um, but a lot of people kind of self-selected out because they didn't see themselves as entrepreneurs. So they, they reframed it around being a builder because you can, you can build economic, you can create econ, uh, customer energy where none existed in a nonprofit within government uh, and within for profit. And so, uh, they were able to distill it down to a, a lower level so people didn't opt out of, I'm not an entrepreneur. So um, interestingly enough, they did ask the question, um, are there um, specific recurring thoughts, behaviors, and emotions that you can identify within highly successful companies, like the, from the startups that, that, that accelerate out? So uh, Gallup being Gallup, they studied, uh, they studied this in depth. They went and, and, and uh, looked at the Inc. 500, you know, the fastest growing companies, and uh, went on a deep dive with about 1,400 different companies and found out the founding teams all did have, uh, they, they had the same cluster of talents, uh, not necessarily individuals, but the team, right? So the important thing is there's not one person that can create a company. It requires a team, a core team. And in this sense, um, they found that there's 10, 10 talents that are, you know, that need to be accounted for. And there's three roles that come from that. And not only does it require this set of talents, uh, but those talents actually will outperform other companies that aren't accounting for those same talents. Um, and you know, the, the case here is jobs and energize the economy. So out of this came three roles and 10 talents. So let me walk you through the three roles. Um, and then, uh, what I'd like to do is I get through this is, you know, there's only a couple more slides. I'd like to have a you know, kind of open conversation. And this is where we can, uh, we can, Kayla can uh, play the, uh, the, the role of opening up the phone lines uh, and we can have voice conversations. It might be easier to have for individuals um, to, to pipe in. Um, so there's three roles, right? So, and again, if you, if you understand the Gallup world, um, the thing is we all have these 10 talents and we all can play these three roles. But we just, we as individuals, because of the unique set of uh, recurring thoughts, behaviors, and emotions we have, we'll tend to gravitate to one versus the others, right? So if you look at the three roles, and this is, I think the genius of, uh, and the thing that's the most utilitarian about all the stuff I work with Gallup is this, this slide here. Look at your core team and ask yourself, do I have someone who leads as a rainmaker? Do I have someone who leads as a conductor? And do I have someone who leads as an expert? Right? So leading means that's the one I tend to, obviously we can play more than one role. So a rainmaker, um, you might think, well, this is somebody who's gonna go out and make money. Well, yes, it can be, it could be salesperson. It could be a marketing person. It could be a talent recruiter, right? So it, the way I like to distill it down is a rainmaker is somebody who can get people to come to the table. If you get it, to get it attention, like if you've ever seen street performers, to get people to come and circle around the street performance, and, and line up for that. That's what a rainmaker is good at. It's convening people around your company. The second role, conductor, is um, you know people who get the machinery going. They're you know this is usually people thinking about through management process. They're uh, they're the ones that are, are tracking and creating systems. Um, they're they're realizing there's machinery to run. So if a rainmaker gathers people around for the performance, the, the conductor is the ones who's going to deliver the promises that you made to them, right? And then the third one, the expert, is somebody who understands, has deep domain expertise on whatever sector, industry you're in. They understand the technology, they understand the product, they understand the market, they understand the, the trends that are going on. They're the ones that kind of have that ability to make sure that you're focusing on meeting the needs of the customers you're trying to have. So those are the three roles. And the way to distill it down into questions, if you think about it, is the company has a why, right? Your company has a why. Why do you exist as a company? And, and that's a question that should be at the core of that, right? Right in the middle, right? And then what you want to make sure is your core team, there's somebody who's representing the rain, rainmaker, because they're going to be asking the, the question of, all right, so what is it that we're doing? What, what, it's the what. How do you explain it to the world in, in terms of what? A, a conductor is going to ask, all right, well, who's going, to do, who's going to do the work? And then the expert's going to be, well, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? So those four questions are powerful questions that you need to make sure that you're answering as a, as a business owner, as a business leader. And you want to make sure that those are people who on every day are waking up and thinking this way, because 
it's going to be a lot easier for me. I, 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 I lead as a conductor. It's going to be a lot easier for me to go to someone who leads as a rainmaker and say, hey, how, how should we be positioning this? What's, what's the, what is it that we should be using to describe what we're having? Because I'm going to be asking, all right, who should, who should be doing what? I'm going to be organizing people and getting them to do stuff. And that's the way it's going to be. So this is, think of this as the top of what we're talking about here, right? So rainmaker, conductor, and expert. Those are the three roles that you have. Now, everyone's going to be different because there's 10 talents that we have to different intensities. So these are the 10 talents that you're going to have to have accounted for. Now, the neat thing is it doesn't have to be just from you and your co-founder. It'd be you and your core employees. It could be with your, your advisors, your board of advisors, your, your lead investors. It's, you have to account from it from a network perspective, the network of people that are tied to your company that are helping shape it on a, on a daily basis. If you understand who brings what to the table at the highest intensity, uh, then you'll be able to make sure that you're accounting for these 10 uh, talents that have to be embedded in your company. So let me walk through the first five and then the second five, and then we'll open it up for everyone to, to kind of distill down what we have. So, the, and these aren't in any order, this is just alphabetical order, right? So confidence is uh, in, in nomenclature, right? This is the sense of how, how well do you know yourself and, and, and do people feel that you know what, that you know yourself, right? So confidence is having the ability to believe that you know what you need to know and that you, you, you operate in a way that other people will follow you because they, they believe you know where you're going, right? Someone who's like walking uh, and you're trying to figure out where to get, if you're in a new city, a good example, you're in a new city and uh, no one knows where to go, someone high in confidence will go, I know where to go. And then they'll just go with, with high degree of certainty and other people will follow it. A delegator, the delegator talent is, um, you know, I can't do everything and I need to figure out who to give the ball to, right? This is a really good point guard. This is somebody who's bringing the ball down if you're playing basketball and they know who to get the ball to. And they don't, they don't need to be the person to take the shot all the time. They're gonna make sure the person who has the best chance of getting the shot will take the shot. Determination, um, you see this a lot in entrepreneurs, it's people that just persevere. I, I like to say someone high in determination, um, is, 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 is not going to leave work until that, that stone is crushed, right? And so they have a sledgehammer and they're just banging it with the sledgehammer until they get through. Disruptor is somebody who's always thinking about, oh, this is, let's rearrange and let's do it a whole different way, right? Disruptor, like I said, obviously you think about innovators and builders and, and entrepreneurs, is somebody who's trying to kind of have, bring a creative solution to the, to the table. Independence is, um, is, you know, they're going to be the ones that take it and put it on their shoulders, right? Uh, and they're, they're going to say, look, I will do everything I need to do to get this done. You know, the buck stops with me and I'm going to put everything I can. So you'll see determination and independence sometimes work together. And I actually used to think that delegator independence would be opposites, but I've seen people who are high in delegator, high in independence. In fact, Kayla is one of them. Okay, Kayla brings both of those two in her top four. Um, and then the other five are knowledge, like right? people who are constantly reading and searching and, and learning about the industry. Um, you typically find knowledge to be baked into an expert, but not necessarily. I'll point that out later. Profitability is number seven. Someone who's thinking about, okay, are we going to make money? Or I like to put it in this way, because not everyone thinks in terms of money and profit. Profitability can also be, will we see an ROI? Will I get a benefit? If I put the time into this project, Will I get the benefit back to me? So that can be an internal question of, you know, should we work on this process? Should I, should I participate in this conversation? Because will it give me value? Um, and then relationship. These are the people that are thinking around social networks. Uh, they're going out and, you know, they're the ones usually going into crowds. They're probably going to conferences and events. They're probably picking up the phone. They're constantly thinking about how do I nurture the, 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 the relationship network I have. And then risk, risk isn't about taking risk, it's about understanding and assessing risk, it's managing risk. And so uh, I found some of the, like the super entrepreneurs I've worked with uh, also are number one risk because they, they are the ones that say, look, um, I've looked at every path and this is the path that's gonna have the highest chance of success and I'm gonna weed out all the other ones, right? A uh, good example is a client of mine, um, he's uh, had two, huge successful uh, um, uh, 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 exits and uh, he's building a third one uh, and he actually got ahead of the curve with uh, COVID and uh, he narrowed his company down to what he's calling ramen profitability um, because that was the only way to survive. He, he went through and calculated like uh, Dr. Strange in the Avengers series uh, and said every possible route 
let's just, this is the one to go with. So he reduced it down. And then the last one is selling. Selling isn't necessarily the salesperson, it's the spokesperson. It's somebody who can portray the vision, who can tell a story, who helps people engage with the brand that you're building and do it in a very, very successful way. So as you look at this, as we're getting through the base of the pyramid here, and we're getting into more of a, uh, a stable, uh, not a stable, but we're getting clear on what we need to do, um, and you're trying to figure out who to get on the boat, um, that's really the lens I would recommend you, you, you looking at is, are, do you have these three roles accounted for on your core team? And do you have these 10 talents accounted either through the people that you're paying or people that are advising you in your network? So there we go. That's the, the gist of the science behind it. Um, but aside from me sitting in my apartment talking at my computer, uh, I'd love to hear from people uh, what questions they have. So um, if you're still watching and you want to throw up a key question in the Q&A, just type it, do it that way, or let uh, Kayla know you want to get on. But I, I'd open up to anybody who wants to ask questions right now on any of these things, because a lot of times I find people want to kind of dive deeper into these 10 talents or these, uh, these three roles. So I leave it to you, crowd. What do you want? Hey, it looks like we've got a hand raise. So I'm going to go ahead and um, allow. Ah, I'm here. Nice. Yes. Hello, Scott. How are you? Good to, good to hear your voice. Uh, always uh, see you on Twitter. So thank you. Yes, exactly. Thanks for spending time. <laughs> Yeah, so thank you for this. This is great, by the way. It's a great content you're pre presenting and a lot of things, almost uh, not a lot, everything is very, very important uh, that you have talked about and presented so far. So no, thank you. Uh, I'm glad I joined. And of course, you know, many things, uh, many of these points as an entrepreneur, you have come across, you know, it's like you in the when you read it, you feel like, oh yeah, I know that. That's true. That's true. But what when you, when you, there's no until you don't listen to somebody like you who has put together this and organized it properly it just you're like kind of lost in into all of these things as an entrepreneur right yeah because you're trying yeah. to play all the roles and everything so my question is um like you mentioned you know of course this uh, covid 19 has done crazy things to all kinds of businesses some are booming some are shut down some are trying to figure out what's the next um, what, what should be the direction we should go into and all. Right. And um, that's, that's the phase I am at at one of my startup. Um, and um, it was basically uh, meeting scheduling software for trade shows, you know? Yeah. And yeah. as you know, the trade shows are, of course, are not down. Yeah, you want to talk about a, a, a timing of that marketplace. Wow. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, up until now, we are okay because of, luckily we had uh, contracts with cu customers who, we're paying and everything, but now we are seeing that um, you know either uh, mo mostly most of the trade shows for the rest of this year have either been canceled or are being canceled or yeah. hundred percent going virtual, etc. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, so we have of course uh, uh, been looking at different possibilities of different features, and we have made some enhancements like adding some virtual meeting capabilities and stuff like that. Um, and so we are also rerouting a kind of thing about our software product. Yeah. But uh, where we are, uh, where I am coming from now is that in the meantime, not only because of we are taking a little bit different path and also uh, there is, there is a different kinds of competition out there now. So it's going to take some while to take a while to really uh, get the revenue build up and stuff like that. Yeah. In the meantime, I'm also having to, you know, uh, for a lot of some people, uh, yeah. which uh, sadly I had to do, but uh, there was no other choice. And I felt very sad to do that because, uh, you know, these are the people who have been with me, um, who know everything about our product and, and been able to be able to create a really good relationship with the, with the clients and everything. Oh, yeah. and, um, but, you know, in no revenue times, it's really hard to figure out, do I need, should I do this or should, uh, or, or otherwise we have to come up with more money to put into the product anyways, right? If you don't, yeah come up with enough money to create a sellable product, there is not going to be any jobs out there afterwards, later. Right? Yeah, yeah, well, those are hard decisions. Those are hard yeah. decisions to make. So how right? have you heard, have you been hearing this kind of thing, some of those? And oh yeah, this is, this is probably the, this is the thing that's on everyone's mind right now, right? So mm -hmm. those of us who are building out companies and we're in the process of launching and building uh, uh, you know, our, out our sales pipeline, and think about this. Um, if, if I had you sit down, and this is a good exercise for everyone who's watching and, and participating, 
if you all sat down and wrote down the seven assumptions that you had in January, right? What were the seven assumptions you built your business on? You know, one of them here, one of them is that you, you're, you're going to build your business on one assumption, uh, very important, that there will be, there will be trade shows, right? Mm -hmm. There will be in-person trade shows and conferences. Mm -hmm. Well, if you sat down and said, okay, what are the seven assumptions I'm going to have to build my company on today? That means you're going to have to take some of those seven that you had out. So I would say, you know, start with the, you know, look at the base assumptions that you built your business around, right? Mm -hmm. Figure out which one shifted. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, this, this slide that I have right up here is a good one. Is like, if you had on your team, somebody who had deep domain expertise uh, around the why, right? So these are, again, these are questions of the why, the who, the how, and the what, right? So in the middle of the why is, is what your company should be, you know, serving. So has your why changed? Has the why of that, com of that company changed? It, maybe the how has changed, but maybe the why is still there, right? So mm -hmm. I would say if you can still say our why is relevant, and that's the center tap root of our company, all right, that's good. Then you got to think about, okay, what's, the, what's the, the what we're doing? Who needs to be part of doing that? And then how are we going to pull that off? That's, that's the idea of getting the rainmaker, the conductor, and the expert pulled together. And then from that, I mean, your assessments and all that stuff, you get, you're, if you're building a company, somebody needs to understand the market. Somebody needs to understand the customer. Somebody understands the product and how the product's going to meet the needs of the customer, right? Um, and and that's, that's an important thing. But I would say for you, Mahir, and then I see we have a couple other questions, Kayla, um, uh, that I would start for you, start at the, go to the why. Why does this company exist? Does it still exist? And then start to figure out who need, you know, the, the people on your team, who are the talent, who's the core team that can add, bring to the table, uh, what is it we need uh, to deliver to the market? Who's going to help deliver to the market? And then how do we deliver it to the market? And, you know, and if it's gone away, if, if your why still exists and it's still a software solution, you know, think about, uh, think about you know, making sure you have the, the right uh, uh, talent on the team. Does that help you answer your question? Yes, definitely. All right. Thank you. All right, cool. Well, thank you. Well, good to hear your voice. Kayla, what else? What's our next one? What's our next question? Sure. So next question comes from Reginald and he says, have you seen these three roles distributed over the talents in a matrix structure? Um, and then part two, uh, do you, or, or that is, do you believe that certain roles are stronger in certain talents? Ah, so good. Okay. So if I understand correctly, uh, have I seen them in a matrix format and then also have, uh, have I seen certain talents show up more in the others? Um, let me go out of this screen and then uh, go into, uh, I'm going to show some proprietary information. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, it's not, it's, it's not bad. It's good stuff, right? Um, let's see here. Go into my question. Sorry. Um, yeah, let me go into uh, the thing I wanted to share with is the grid. No, don't have the grid there. Um, you all see my, my laptop right now? I... Yes. All right, good. I'm going to make sure I had that up there. Let me get my mail. I did have it up, but then for some reason I shut all my windows down. Um, so let me show you how this comes from a, a company perspective, uh, Reginald, and uh, let me know. I'm sorry, Scott. I think yep. they're only seeing your uh, uh, slideshow, uh, like that window. I guess oh, you only okay. shared one window, one screen. Ah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Um, I'm going to, uh, I don't need the tour here. There's a good reason why you're not seeing all this stuff because I'm not ready for you on that one. Um, all right. All right. Ken. All right, so uh, Reginald Mahir, uh, can you see it now? Let me see here. Oh, you may have to reshare. Uh, okay, yeah, here we go. Here we go. go. Yeah, there we go. I got gotcha. you. All right, can you see that? Yep, yep. Uh, so you see my little uh, BP10 grid. So here's actually Shadow Ventures. So the, this is uh, who Kayla, uh, uh, everyone hosting this, this thing. This is the team. Um, and this, and Reginald, let me know, um, you have the ability to come on and, oh, good, you can see, yes. Uh, and and uh, we can unmute you. Kayla's got you up in the queue if you want to talk about this. But um, so when I'm working with clients um, and, I, and we go, everyone, everyone on the team goes through and takes the BP10, um, then I take the, the top four. This is the way I do it. I take the top four and I show across the, the company 
who has which talents, and then which role they have. And then I, I actually find great value in this, this uh, approach. Um, you all can see the green and the gray. Uh, the gray boxes are your lower two, um, uh, the, the lower two, the lowest two. So if you think about it, we all have these 10, and the, what Gallup likes to do is let's show you the, the highest intens intensities you have, because in the heat of the battle, that's where you're gonna go, right? Um, and it's always nice for me you know, when I work with teams to show people where, who has the lowest intensity or the highest intensity, because the key here is in your, when you have a team, it's like, okay, if I'm high, uh, I have high intensity in an area, but I'm like, like 10, let's look at the, you know, this disruptor, right? So this is where I can um, go here. If you look at um, the, this, this, this level disruptor, right? And um, you look across the company, there are two people who, who have the lowest intensity they have is in disruptor. So if they're faced with a problem like needing to come up with a new concept, a creative solution, they can sit there and try to hammer it out. They could probably work on it by themselves, but as a team, we're trying to figure out about efficiencies, right? So uh, it would be better for Matthew or Nick to knock on Brian's door uh, or KP's door or Anastasia's door and say, hey, can I borrow your, your brain for a few minutes? Here's what I'm trying to do. How would I come up with it? And so that's, yes, from a matrix perspective, Reginald, uh, that's, that's what I think is very helpful. Um, and then answers one and three of your question. Good, so you got that. What were, um, what was the other one? Uh, okay, so uh, the other part of this was, uh, are some more talents more adept to the roles? Um, it, it all depends, right? Um, what's fascinating is if you start to realize um, uh, how people are addressing the problem, right? The, the questions I was, I was saying that we asked, that's really when you get in a team conversation, and that's the beauty of using uh, um, whatever assessments you're using in your company, um, whether they be a Gallup assessment or a DISC profile or whatever, you know, Enneagrams, or the, all, there's a bunch of them out there. Um, as long, it, what's the beauty is you're creating a common nomenclature. Um, you know, it's a common glossary of terms. It's a common dictionary that we all work with. And that's, oops, sorry about that. Um, that's what we all, we all, we all need and, and thrive off of, of having the ability of a shared language. Um, but to answer your question quickly, Reginald, no, there's, there is no one way, one set of talents that fit better in a role. They just come out differently, right? So someone who's an expert who is disruptive, high disruption like KP, is gonna come out with, he, he's a person in a company that's the, who is the, uh, seen as uh, understanding the market and the, and the customer the best, he's going to come up with something that's going to be amazingly uh, creative, right? Because it's disruptive. Now, you can be an expert that's also uh, high in risk, right? Uh, and maybe low in disruption. It just means that you're going to show up differently. Uh, as an expert, you're not going to be thinking way outside the box. Uh, if you come as a high risk uh, and somebody who has high selling uh, talents, that means you're going to have somebody who can see the field of possibilities and probabilities probabilities, not possibly probabilities, choose the right path, and then also be able to communicate it to people. So if you're working in the nuclear regulation or a nuclear uh, power plant, uh, I mentioned that because Jeff used to work in a nuclear power plant, you would want an expert who's going to think through risk very quickly and also be able to communicate it very quickly across your organization. So, uh, all right, so let me see here. I see originally sent teams aren't mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. Each member tends to be distributed throughout the roles I'm assuming that, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm assuming that overlap is okay, but the analysis is more key to see where you're the weakest. Isn't that one of the key t takeaways? Um, all right, so, so your point about these aren't mutually exclusive, correct? Um, it means that out of 10, you're going to be more, you're going to have a higher likelihood to go to one way of seeing the world. Remember, these are, these talents, think of these talents and these roles as lenses to see how you see the world, right? So based on what role you play and what talents you bring to the world, that's how you see the world and that's how you're gonna to communicate to the world. Um, and at the base level of this is, if you don't understand these filters, um, then how can anyone else understand what you're trying to say, right? And so the beauty of working with strengths when I work with companies that either I'm running or I'm consulting with and having this conversation around strengths, it gives people a way to see more self-awareness of, ah, that's why I, I do that, or even better, oh, that's why he does that, or that's why she does that. 
because then they start to see, ah, it's, we all operate differently, right? We all see the world differently. We all make decisions differently. We have different behavior patterns. So the key thing is, um, yeah, they're not mutually exclusive. I mean, you, you'll see some people that test out really high intensity across the board. These are like one in, one in 5,000 people uh, that, that they've, they've assessed will have um, a, a top quartile a, a score in all 10. Those are kind of unique creatures. They're, they're the unicorns of people that can just build. They have everything they need, but they, they still need a team behind them. So um, this is what you're trying to go for. The big idea, the key takeaway, Reginald, is um, you're, you want your team to have accounted for all 10 and all three. Um, if left to your own devices, could you be a rainmaker and a, and a conductor? Yeah, you could be a rainmaker, conductor, and expert. But would you be comparatively better than other people on your team? It's all about comparative advantage. Um, and then the other thing is um, you don't really want to see where you're weakest. Uh, it's you want to you just have well, you want to have self awareness of where you're strong and where you're weak. Like, and I'm going to say weak. It's intensity. So you have the highest intensity at risk. Uh, or you have the highest uh, intensity at disruptor, that'll determine kind of how you're seeing the world. So it's more of understanding the continuum of where you're at um, and then being aware that uh, you're, you're something that you're most intense at. I'll tell you, being a disruptor, I'm a KP and I have the same top four, right? So if you see his, his four, um, I have the same four. So I can commiserate with him because if, as I said earlier, every strength, every talent can be a weakness. So if there is a, um, uh, a situation which I just come and, and I'm just not being mindful of, I'm going to try to recreate the world here, teams tend to not want to have too much disruption. They can see tinkering, but they don't want to have everything being reset every day. Uh, and that's, that's kind of the thing here is just, you're, it's more of being aware of what your tendencies are going to be and then being mindful every day to figure out what do I need to dial up and what do I need to dial down? Where, where's my blind spots uh, and who do I need to talk to to help uh, kind of see around that corner? And that's where it is. And so Reginald, your last question is, is it an assessment tool that helps you ID your roles and talents? Um, well, that's the, uh, the Builder Profile 10 uh, will we'll do that for you in terms of um, uh, you, these are the three roles you need to account for and the 10 talents you need to account for if you want to have a, a company that's going to have a higher likelihood to succeed based on their research. I think that answers the question. Yeah. A lot of great questions out of you, Reginald. This is like, um, you're like a great cluster of great questions. So thank you. All right, Kayla, what's next? So we've got uh, two more questions, one from Jeff. Uh, All right. So Jeff says, I have a good rainmaker and expert on the team. However, the conductor is a work in progress. What do you suggest is the best way to build the person who wants to serve as the conductor? Mm. Uh, mostly needs to grow his ability to disrupt and sell growing from the list. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a great question. Um, Cause I think uh, <laughs> in terms of how do you help people grow, um, you can develop these talents you can develop these roles better um and i think it's uh it would be good uh to go with the idea that um you know i guess the question jeff is do you have to work with the team that you have now or are, are you in the are you looking to hire because if you're if it's just a matter of working with the team that you have on hand um having the ability to uh see the assessments if you're using this this framework the builder profile 10 uh, allows for you to pull an intensity report off of each individual. Um, the, the end user like uh, won't see it, but someone like myself who's trained as a coach can, can for like $30, pull out the, the numbers behind it. And you can kind of see who on your team might uh, have a, a, a parity in those roles. So for example, as I was going through the training process for this, they pulled my report and I am a conductor, but I'm also equally strong as an expert like just it's a razor thin margin so i can lead either as an expert or as a as a conductor um so it would be one assuming that you had to work with your team um you can pull an intensive report to kind of see where they're at but i would say um listen for the questions so here's here's these all these assessments from gallup um uh based on asking looking for where do people tend to gravitate towards so Watch it as a, as a team leader, Jeff, watch to see in, in meetings and or listen for people, the questions they're asking. 
for the people that start on your team asking questions of like, well, who's going to do it or who should I talk to? They're going to ask the who type of questions. Look for that person and then start to develop, you know, encourage them to take on roles of what a conductor would do, like putting process together, putting systems in place. Um, and, and then they don't necessarily have to be, have the skill of disruption and selling. They just need to have access to people who are good at disruption and selling, right? Um, so if you think about it, a conductor who's highly disruptive will be someone who's going to constantly reorganize who's doing what and going to be a very dynamic work environment, very dynamic process environment. They're not going to be the ones that you know, sit there and turn the wheel. They're going to be reinventing the wheel, uh, the wheels that you have to crank. And then from a selling perspective, um, they need to communicate a, a vision. So um, look through, I guess your <laughs> long way of answering your short question here, Jeff, is uh, look for what, where people gravitate towards. Um, they're the ones that like to organize the sock drawers. They're like, they like to organize the junk drawers. That's a person who would be a good conductor. They're also the ones that are figuring out who to sit where, who, who needs to sit where in a room, um, who needs to be in a meeting. They, they can think through the who needs to be there. So look for those people who tend to just naturally go to ask those questions that are interested in what the problems that a conductor solves. Um, and then from a, the ability to develop out disruption and selling, um, I think it's a matter of, uh, it's, the, be the base here is um, get them to focus on applying disruption and selling in terms of a, an objective. That's the, the key here is just don't do the assessments, but use the assessments to tie them to performance and objectives. And so as a manager, what you're going to want to do is sit down and say, hey, okay, ask, ask a lot of questions and say, how can you go about, what, like, what's a problem that you want to solve that, you know, is there something that needs to get set up? and walk with them as the co-pilot, not the pilot, but the co-pilot, to ask them the right questions so they can then kind of come to a conclusion to how they could be uh, can create a, bring a creative solution to the, to the table. Hopefully that answers your questions, Jeff. And happy birthday to Harrison. I heard there was a, a drive-by, a drive-through birthday party yesterday. So hopefully, hopefully I had a good time. Let me know if that answered your question, Jeff. I rambled for a while. All right, Kayla, what's the next one? Uh, this is the last one from Reginald. And I can't, I don't know if we touched on this one, but um, uh, he said also people slash teams aren't mutually exclusive. Yes, yeah, that's, I was, I was talking to that yeah. uh, earlier. Yes, yes. Okay, um, I think that that's all our questions then, unless um, if there are any last minute, I know we're right at time here. Right at the time, so. Thank you for everyone who showed up uh, and participated on this. This has been a, a fun conversation. Reginald and here and Jeff, thanks for these questions. These are great questions, very helpful. And um, I'll, uh, uh, through Kayla, uh, be able to share with you uh, when I do uh, uh, the, the summary post, Mahir specifically, uh, around some of the stats and, and, and facts that uh, we're sharing on the slides. Yes, and then we'll be in touch with everyone on how to get uh, access to the reporting as well. Yeah, and then for the final slide, let me go to, uh, where is that? Can I get this one? Yeah, can you see that? Let me see to the, uh, if you need to get a hold of me, you can go to uh, causeshift.com uh, slash blog and read a post or send me an email at scott at causeshift.com. Happy to talk to you guys. Thank you guys. Yes. All right, guys. Thanks, Kayla. Thanks. And then Mahir, if you want to reach out, um, I just saw his question. If you want to reach out to uh, Scott, his information is on the screen. Yeah. Or hit me on Twitter. You know how to get me, Mahir. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Thank you, guys. Enjoy your Friday and, uh, you know, enjoy the shift. All right. Thank you. Bye. Take care.